Um, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this September 14th uh, select board meeting. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order. And as usual, I'll read our public participation policy. The Hatfield Select Board welcomes everyone to its meetings and all other public meetings of the town of Hatfield. All, all regular and special meetings of the boards and committees of the town of Hatfield shall be open to the public and shall conform to the open meeting law. Executive sessions are closed to the public and will be held only as prescribed by the statutes of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It is important to recognize that the open meeting law affords the opportunity to listen to the proceedings but not necessarily participate. During meetings of the select board, an attempt will be made to find a balance between hearing from members of the community and conducting the required business of the Hatfield Select Board. Um, next, we always, as always, we have announcements. Ed, did you have anything? I don't have any announcements, no. No announcements. Brian, did you have anything? I do not, thank you. I guess I would just say, you know, school is, in full swing, th things seem to be going very well. I know Ed had a nice reminder last time about you know being watchful for school buses and everything, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to say it seems like our three fall sports teams are off to a great start. So that's kind of exciting. Girls soccer, boys soccer, and field hockey. So feels nice. Um, that would be it. Fall's a very nice time. Fall is a nice time. And I hope everybody took some time sports, to yeah. commemorate the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Mm -hmm. Hard to believe. I, it is hard to believe. Um, I was on the board when that happened and last time. And um, But anyway, I hope everybody took time to commemorate that. So our first order of business is the approval of some minutes. I won't make... <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the August 17th, 2021 meeting. Second. A motion's made and second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Public forum? Oh. I, you know what? I completely skipped over it by accident. I I don't know if anyone's here or not, but I just thought I... No, thank you for, for that, because I did skip over it. Is anyone here for public forum? Kathy, would you like to approach the mic? Sorry about that. Does that work? Yep. Okay. Um, Kathy Gow, Depot Road. Um, I actually have a statement to read for myself, and also I've been asked to read a statement by Bob Wagner, Chair of the Community Preservation Committee. Um, both of these are in uh, reference to the last item on your agenda tonight, assuming you get there, um, which was, I guess, a continuation of the discussion of the uh, use of the second floor of Town Hall for the Historical Museum. Um, so this is a statement that uh, Bob Wagner wrote. Um, he could not be here this evening, so, um, he asked that somebody be able to read it. So, um, uh, I understand, this is from Bob Wagner, speaking as Bob Wagner. I understand that the select board will have a discussion of town hall use and the historical museum on its agenda for September 14th. Community Preservation Act grants have made significant investments in the town's historical collection through professional cataloging, documentation, and attestation and restoration. This work over the last 10 years has brought Hatfield's rich history to the fore in popular public displays and programs, media articles, and professional recognition. The museum collection needs and deserves a permanent accessible home. To this end, at a minimum, the collection requires an ongoing storage location that is climate appropriate and accessible by museum staff. Previous select boards endorsed the installation of the historical collection on the second floor of Town Hall. Community Preservation Act grants awarded for handicapped accessible improvements to Town Hall were based on this vision with accessibility to the second floor for the museum collection being central to the grant proposals submitted by the town for this funding. Housing the museum collection in Town Hall will solve the immediate needs for a secure storage location, provide the collection with a permanent publicly accessible home, and fulfill the requirements of the CPA grants awarded for this purpose. Thank you, Robert Wagner, uh, Chair, Community Preservation Commission. Thank you, Kathy. 
now speaking as myself, Kathy Gao, um, curator of the um, Historical Museum, which for anyone who doesn't know, uh, the Hatfield's two museums are owned by the town of Hatfield and managed by the Hatfield Historical Society, which is different than the Hatfield Historical Commission. Um, so um, speaking um, for the Hatfield Historical Society, uh, we were just going to ask that unless your um, discussion at the end of today's meeting um, basically decides that the second floor of the town hall is the best you know, long-term storage solution for the historical museum at this time, um, we would request that the subcommittee that was convened last year uh, be reconvened, um, not to just discuss, but to determine uh, what would be the best um, accessible and safe location for the long-term storage of the Hatfield Historical Museum, which for the past 10 years has been in the second floor of the town hall and only stopped because the town hall was being renovated and we were asked to move out. So um, anyway, that's my statement. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. I Go ahead. I just wanted to say something regarding the topics on the agenda. So, you know, I, I take responsibility for um, the topic to discuss town hall needs. Um, it's sort of misleading. Uh, it does reference the museum, um, but really that topic is for the board to have a discussion regarding the town's needs for use of town hall. Mm -hmm. Which, and all of that is part of this. You're, it, it's all part of it. And so I wasn't expecting we'd be making any decisions. And I guess I was under the impression that after we had a meeting, what, three or four weeks ago, mm -hmm. I thought that that working group was going to be reconvened. Correct. Okay. Correct. It, it will be. Okay. And it, it's my impression that that group will make a recommendation maybe to the board, but mm -hmm. not make a determination about the final. Right. right. Okay. So I thought the select board was the one who had to convene that subcommittee. So I don't think anything happened because. No, it's just a matter of, of coordinate setting up that, that group, scheduling that group to meet. Yeah, again. We, we definitely should yeah. do that. But I, Agreed. yeah, and, but I think it, you're, yeah. yes, I, we weren't expecting, I wasn't expecting to have a discussion about necessarily the museum tonight, mm, but that's about correct. No, it, it, everything it, in general. There's this is one thing that was it's all part of such a, yeah, as you know, Kathy, misleading. a larger discussion, right? Yeah, so. Is that something um, that we could maybe, um, and I'm sure Kathy's thinking this as well, um, like some sort of a time frame that mm -hmm. we can get the ball rolling mm -hmm. to maybe by October first or eight, like in the next couple of weeks to have the first reconvening of of the committee so that we can right. get the ball rolling. That's so, right. So that was that, with right? Kathy, Ed from the Select yep. Board, yes, okay. uh, Amy Hahn from Historical Commission. Yeah. Bob Wagner is sort of um, right. And Just to check Bob schedules Oakley. and let's get, you know, we yeah, can start definitely having. Definitely yeah. let's get it moving. Yeah. I, th I thought we would be doing that. We did talk about that at the last yep. meeting. And I know there's a yeah, lot going on. But been, it's yeah. important. Yes, we do intend to do that. Okay. And we'll, we'll watch the meeting and see what happens at the end of tonight's meeting. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, so anyone else for public forum? No. <laughs> Is anyone joining us maybe uh, online for public forum? Not, not for public forum. Okay. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Brenna, do you I know I see Brenna, but she's yeah. on the she's, agenda. Yeah. And she okay. has a board meeting this evening at six o'clock tonight. So Oh, so the board can we that's, that's fine. fine. We should we we should be fine. Where did Bob go? He's Right there. Oh, <laughs> I just couldn't see you because you were hiding behind Karen. So our, our first order of um, posted business is a visit from Chief Flaherty, who comes with good news. Bob. I do have some good news. Mm -hmm. uh, so last Wednesday, we received a phone call from Senator Warren's office advising the town of Hatfield that we were awarded an assistance to firefighters grant. Um, I submitted the grant back in January and it goes through a lengthy process of some computer tabulations and then having peer review um, that they look at it and because of some of the restrictions it took a little bit longer to get through the process. The system that they award them through kind of failed for about six weeks so the government had to fix the program. Uh, but we did get awarded $161,238 and 10 cents that will be used to buy communications equipment for the fire department. Uh, 
It's kind of a long, long-standing project. It's been on Capitol for a few years. And because our equipment is aging, the radio that I wear every day is actually about 22 years old. Normal life expectancy is about 12 to 15. So this is going to help upgrade the entire department. It's also going to give us multiple bandwidth to talk to our mutual aid partners and uh, be able to talk to our cops, which we currently don't have that ability to hear them or anything like that. So this is, uh, it's about half of what I originally put in for, but the government has the ability when they're doing their process to adjust. Um, so we did lose a little bit of money out of it, but the project will still be able to move forward due to the grant and also due to the funds that were approved at this this year's town meeting. So it's good news, it's not gonna cost the taxpayers as much money. Um, so this is, this is good, this is the third time that I've submitted this grant and there was over 8,100 applications nationwide. So it's very, very competitive. Oh, great job, Chief. Yeah. That's that is really big money. <laughs> That's a lot of money. It is. To do a, a very worthwhile project, people who watch the meetings regularly or go to town meeting know that there was, you know, there, our radios would have been rendered obsolete, right? At very here, soon here, because yeah, of, here, yeah. um, and so you know, this is it, it's a it's a safety issue, right, for our fire firefighters, and there's a police component too. So the police actually, uh, I think he was going to be putting a letter together. He had actually received different grants from this one this was okay. specific to firefighters nationwide um, he got some at the state level that he's actually going to be able to use to purchase some of the radios that were also approved at town meeting so <clears throat> in the end we will not be using all of the funds that were appropriated at in May so I'm happy to report we will be returning some funds to the town that is really fire great and police. I know that already from right. talking to Chief Dakota right nice that's really great and, and, and it's certainly comforting to know that the communications will be functioning better both within our department and with our neighboring communities and our mutual aid partners so really great job i also know from talking to bob when he was working on this this was a a big chunk of work to put together this was a difficult grant application and, and he mentioned the competitive nature so it's, yes. it's really, um, you're to be commended, Bob. Thank you very much. We yeah, appreciate the, it. The 8100 that originally went in, it gets down once it goes through. So into the peer review process, which is really kind of the, the final stage, that's actually only 1500 total made it to the peer review stage nationwide. The rest of them were all cut out due to other technical glitches mm -hmm. or they just didn't qualify. So it's a, it's a small pool that we were able to make it through. And they're actually down to, this was round eight, and they're only expecting 10 rounds this fiscal year because they're the federal fiscal year obviously ends in a couple of weeks so well i was very happy to to get this news last week <laughs> as were we as were we so congrats bob yeah, thank you very much you. Thank do, you very do, is there a time frame as to when the funds will be available to expend so i actually once i got the award announcement officially in the email on friday morning um, i had the email a few minutes after seven and by quarter after eight, I had already gone into the system and accepted the award. Their actual, the original uh, data performance was actually effective as of September 6th, and we have two years to work on it. I've already been in re-contact with our vendor. We are actually setting up a meeting probably within the next day or two. He's gonna come out. We're just gonna fine tune some things. They already knew what we were planning. Um, so I expect the order to probably go in no later than next week and six to eight weeks for delivery and then maybe another two to three weeks to do a couple of other things dealing with uh, the state and getting them programmed and then we'll do an in-service. So I, I would see that we definitely will be in service probably within about 12 weeks from today. And, and do they release the funds right away? Yes, once, once we go through and submit it, um, I need all the paperwork, I need all the- Oh, so we buy them, from, okay. And it is reimbursed. Yep. It's Correct. reimbursable. But everything is actually done through this new uh, now it's two year old FEMA Go platform. Yep. Um, so it should be relatively quick because of the process. So I would assume that if we get the whole project up and completed before December, I can't imagine that we probably won't go more than about February at the latest to get the, the monies reimbursed. Right. No supply chain issues with this type of equipment at this point? Nope, I, uh, I actually, I talked to the, our sales rep at Pittsfield Communication again today. And we had a couple of things we had to iron out 
and he is, he's telling me that Motorola is still saying six to eight weeks is their lead time, and that was the same time frame that I had earlier this year when I spoke to him. So things still seem to be on track, and then we just have to go through a couple of things at the state level because we have radio ID identifiers that they have to issue and a couple of technical things, but shouldn't really take all that long. We have a bunch of it's already in the work, so it should be relatively simple. Excellent. Awesome. Well, congratulations yeah. again. Nice job. Congratulations, congratulations to you. The important thing that the town should know is <clears throat> not only do our department heads work hard for the town of Hatfield, but all of them are always looking for grants mm -hmm. and to pursue it. And so many of them gotten grants over the years and they saved the town a lot of money. So I, I just want to mention that so people mm -hmm. are aware that all the departments are mm -hmm. working hard looking for grants. Right. Yes. There's three excellent grant getters right in this room. Actually, yeah. Lydia's had, a, you've been able to get some grants yeah. as well. Um, and, and I can tell you as somebody who writes grants and then um, does the administration and reporting work afterwards, it's a huge amount of work. Yes. It really is a lot of work. So, um, so I, I think this will be my fifth grant since I took over. Um, the same day, actually, we got notified that we got approved for the next fiscal year's emergency management preparedness grant. So that's another $2,700. And then there's another grant that's actually will be coming due again in January, which should be another $10,000 that will be going towards the fire department. That it's a non-competitive grant, but you still have to do the paperwork. Yeah, yeah. there's right. always, and, there, and it's a our, lot. I, I think so. people who don't write grants or, or, you know, then do the reporting on them probably don't have any idea, right. but right. it can be really like pulling your hair out kind of stuff. So very beneficial though it's helped us as the fire department the grants that i've gotten so far it's helped us tremendously with a lot of things that we were you're not necessarily behind on but it could have put the town a little bit more on the hook for a few dollars and we were able to do a lot of these projects mm -hmm. and really no cost to the taxpayers for the most part so mm -hmm. excellent Great. bob thank you thank you very much congrats to you and your department so I do want to get to our next agenda item fairly quickly um, because Brenna um, Duquette from the Housing Authority is joining us. Brenna is online. Do you have a camera, Brenna? Unfortunately, I'm having camera difficulties, so I do apologize. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> um, but we want to be respectful of the fact that you have a meeting at 6 o'clock. Um, so I just, I, I had asked um, Marlene to see if you could join us on the um, for the meeting tonight because you know there's been a lot of activity over at Capawong. The project look like looks like it's coming along really, really nicely. And I just thought it might be nice for an update for townspeople on it since you know they've been um, you know watching our meetings as this project was you know conceptualized and uh, you know as it moved forward. So we'd like to hear from you about all of that. Yeah, absolutely, and um, thank you for inviting me. We are very excited that this project is coming to an end, and it's been, like you said, many, many years in the works before I even took over this housing authority. So it's exciting to see the finish line. Um, as of yesterday, we did the final walkthrough, and we have the final punch list. So um, it should be completed two weeks. And that is just with the installation of the crosswalk signs. We're just waiting for them to come in and so they, they can be installed. But everything else is um, wrapping up. We were behind schedule and I'm sure everyone noticed that it was taking a little longer than anticipated. Um, and that was just due to some unforeseen when you know when you start a project you don't know what you're going to run into so it was no fault of a construction company but just some unforeseen things hiccups i will say that um prolonged it just a bit the original um date for the asphalt was august 5th so it finally came to fruition last friday so it was about a month behind but the residents were very um, forgiving, I'll say, and uh, I, I, um, I appreciate, you know, the town working with us and, and kind of giving us some leeway on the parking situation. So thank you for that. It looks really nice. I, I haven't, I didn't notice, are the lines painted yet or will that be later? 
They are uh, painted. They are. Yes. Okay. They were painted as of Friday as well. So it's um it's very exciting. So really we're just it's small details. We need to plant some trees, of course, put our benches back, um, the crosswalk signals, but all the important things are done. Excellent. And it's important now the residents can park back in their spots, which I know they were looking forward to. Yeah, I think it'll be great, especially as, you know, I mean, we know winter's coming. I don't want to, I know nobody wants to hear that, but it is coming and it'd be nice to have that all done and have those extra spots over there, you know, so that more, more residents can park. And then I, I, you know, I, I'm sure you'll work with the residents um, there on the location of the trees and the benches, because that was something that was really important to them as this project got underway, so. Absolutely, they've already had their first tenant meeting and that was something that was brought up and something both myself and my board are really um, taking into account what what they're interested in and where they want it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's very important and it's been important to the residents from the beginning, so. Right, exactly. Okay, Brenna, thank you so much. Did either of you have any yeah. questions for Brenna? Uh, no questions, Ed, just no. I think it looks great as yeah. a, it looks, as a it person looks nice who walks by. So, they're yeah. numbered. Each of the parking spots have a number. So I didn't even notice that. I better. just came right by. Yeah. I, I, you know, I meant to look, and I guess I must have uh, forgot. Well, and not only yeah. with, in, in the parking lot itself, which was the, the crux of this whole project, um, it's just going to be safer now for the residents just getting in and out of their cars. I mean, mm -hmm. that, right? That... The parking lot had been in rough shape prior to this, so um, it was nice that um, Brenna and Capawonk were able to secure that grant. To well, and it means that there's more residents that can actually park in the lot, which means yes. less crossing the street, yep. exactly. which is, you know, to, would, to me, which was one of the best, uh, you know, benefits of this yep. project. So, and of course, that was a project also done with grants. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, Brenna, thank you very much. Thanks, Brenna. Thank you, guys. Thank you, yep. and Thank and you. pass our thanks on to your to your board as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so our topic three is a report, a COVID nineteen report from our COVID coordinator Claudia Sardi. I don't see Claudia here. Is Claudia here? No. Okay, well, if she, sh that's disappointing. <laughs> um, if she shows up, we'll maybe try to backtrack a little bit. May I make a yes. comment? So um, as the residents over the last couple of weeks um, have started receiving the phone calls, mm -hmm. um, you know, the Monday updates from Chief Flaherty, um, you know, just where we stand with the, with the coronavirus and, and what, uh, what's unfolding in the town. So it's mm -hmm. nice to see that last night's call was was only one new case. Mm -hmm. So it, hopefully that's a trend that we're kind of had a, a, a little peak and, and now we're, we're heading downward. So um, but we're gonna continue with those calls on a go forward basis, right. um, you know, till, till we feel that it's no longer necessary. So. Yeah. Right. There's only one active case as of today. Great. Right. Yeah, that was one thing I was hoping to discuss with Claudia because it's the the calls. I, mine when it, if they go to my machine for some reason, my voicemail and my cell phone, and I know it's my phone. It's not the code red. It cuts off the beginning of so I never hear the number of cases. Um, but I would like to hear. You know, we we used to have the number of cases and the number that were released from quarantine, and then the total number of cases we've had as a town. So I'd like to see that. Um, Add it in there, but if Claudia comes, we'll we'll address that. And there is a weekly statement that's posted it's on the posted town's website right. yes. and yep. Facebook, I believe. Right. So if anybody's interested right. in seeing that, right, right, there is different ways to get the information. That's posted on mo every Monday. Right. So, uh, and also, if I may, so was was Claudia invited to tonight's meeting? She she I, got a separate email. Okay, I just want to you know be fair and make sure that yeah she knew about it. So. Yeah, I mean this has. I know sometimes there's a conflict yeah, we, on her end. Had conversations okay, that's fine. I just wanted to, yeah. you know, make sure. This okay. has happened. Yeah, this is not the up. first time. No. Leave that it at that. Um, so our topic four is a discussion about the eligible use of the local re 
coronavirus recovery funds. Um, I see Daryl on. Daryl, I assume you're on to participate in this discussion. Yeah, I just want to listen in. I apologize for not being there, but just wanted to get a heads up. I know you're going to meet with the rest of the finance committee on the 28th at your next meeting, but uh, just feeling a little out of touch. So trying to figure out what you guys are thinking about with this. That's all. Yeah, we haven't had discussions yet, so there's, you're not out of touch at all. Um, someone just joined the meeting. I want to make sure it isn't Claudia. Claudia, who is G on the meeting? Is that Claudia? No, Claudia is Oh, okay. Okay, so G is just someone joining. Okay. So, so Madam Chair, yes. I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say, so if people are sort of wondering what we're discussing as far as the coronavirus um, fiscal recovery fund, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's another round of funding that the government has given to cities and towns. And so uh, separate from the CARES Act money that we right. received last year, fiscal year. It's under the year, new right? act, it's under the, the American act. Rescue Plan Act that right. the president. So, so the town will be receiving in the $300,000 range. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a, one of the one of the charges of those funds is it, of course, has to have something to do with coronavirus or, or you know, COVID related, or whether recovery, it's infrastructure, right, recovery, recovery mm -hmm. that type of thing. And that's what we're discussing, or we will be discussing in a couple of weeks with the Finance Committee to see what projects um, we have in mind that, that think that we can use that fund. Because there, there's a somewhat narrow scope to it. Yes. It's is. not just, you know, it's, it's a lot of money, but it's not as if yeah. you can use it for, there's a, there's a pretty narrow there's scope. There's five more areas that have yeah. been right. identified. Right. And they go into a little bit, and I think in your handout, mm -hmm. right. they go into a little bit of detail as to what qualifies right. within those four right. areas. Yep. And, the, and the, you know, the, the, the biggest one is water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. Sure. And of course, water and sewer, that always, you know, piques our interest. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think it was 300,000. I thought it was Isn't one. It? Well, I, There's well, two, two releases. I thought it was it's what, oh, it's, yeah. But the, yeah. it's how they're distributing the money. Um, oh, the 315,000, I think, was the um, initial. The county reallocation, I believe, if I understood that correctly. And yes, yeah, so on August 17th, Okay, on August 17th, the town received $315,734. Uh, on June 22nd, which was in FY21, was the first payment, and that was 170138 I received those figures from the treasurer's office. But, but those are just installments, and ultimately it'll be about 971000 That is right. correct. I'm um, looking at that figure right now, 971746 right. And right now we haven't spent a penny of this. We haven't, right? And my other question on this is, I was as I was reading this, it said broadband projects must serve unserved or underserved households and businesses. Mm -hmm. Do we know from Comcast if there's anybody that's not served on broadband in this town? I'm just right. curious. Right, and, and Ed, you had asked me that, and I still need to get that answer from okay. Comcast. I'm not aware if there's areas you know, in, in town that, that don't have, I think it's the actual, the infrastructure of it, I right? Not waste connecting. Power plant doesn't have it, right? Wastewater yeah, we water know they don't. plant doesn't right. have it. Right. It, it. If I may, but I, I believe that, I believe that the funding for um, uh, internet type connections would would be a, a large not a the building or build, it's, right, it's, the, it's the infrastructure right. correct right right so so we have Comcast we have Verizon we probably have satellite uh, in different things um, so Hatfield's in a good place as far as that goes um, unlike some of the real rural yeah. communities that that for sure need, need help with their mm -hmm. with their broadband um, so, so I, I agree. There's certain play, but it, but it's the bigger it's, infrastructure yeah. thing. It's not um, another. It's not connecting right. particular Every, yeah. users to right. it. Right. Um, 
So, and, and it's great, and I, I'm grateful for this money, and we'll, we'll you know, I, I'm looking forward to the discussions mm -hmm. about the best way to use it. You know, of course, my, like I said, my interest is peaked with the water and sewer, you know, but $971,000 in the water and sewer world isn't a ton of money. Yeah, um, yeah it wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily be a mm -hmm. super large project, mm -hmm. um, but. Do we know if there's any money that the CARES did not cover? that might be covered under this? None, I know none of this funding can be used for any of the similar because the guidelines are different. As mm -hmm. okay. Ministry said, there's only five categories. I've read about 80 of the 140 something pages and nothing that was spent for COVID expenditures is allowed under this because this is a recovery okay. act. So. We'll spend it wisely. So while. yeah. we. Uh, <laughs> Wisely and cautiously, yeah. and to be as impactful as, yeah. as possible. Right. Um, yeah. But we will assemble, um, you know, a, a team to talk about this. And obviously, Daryl, um, you know, the finance committee will be on that, and capital planning, I think, yes. should be on there. And um, so, just so residents know, the money is coming in. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is a sizable amount of money, and we, you know, there, there'll be, I'm sure, a lot of discussion about yep. the best way to allocate that. Is that all we needed to talk about on that one, on that item? Uh, yes, if, if I, you know, um, wasn't sure if the, or certain that the board wanted to have um, or start some discussion about potential uses, but as you had mentioned, water and sewer infrastructure, I've had a conversation with um, the, the town's engineer regarding the wastewater treatment plant and um, the, the wastewater master plan. And, and as Phil knows, that there are some, there's some leaks that need attention and might qualify. So those are, you know, there are some potential possibilities. Mm -hmm. And would those things already be on the capital plan? Phil, or are they outside of the capital plan? It's probably outside the capital plan. So then maybe we should have, make sure Phil is at the meeting as well. Daryl, do you have any questions about this or any comments after? No, no, this sounds, this all sounds good. I look forward to our discussion on the 28th and uh, It'll be great to be able to utilize some of these funds to offset some of the costs that the town has incurred in the last last year and a half. So that'll be great. So well, I don't see that they can be used to offset particular costs. Has has the finance committee gotten this memorandum? Um, did I send that to them? Yeah, I believe I did. I just like to add it was that. in the original email from Marlene. Okay. I mean, we, okay. Yeah. We can I certainly cover cover current COVID costs. You current know, COVID, COVID right. Yeah, I just like to add, like so that. we are using some of the money to compensate the COVID coordinator. I'd like okay. to add that, which is an eligible cost. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Direct COVID related costs is one of them. Okay. Well, and, and what about the school? Is some of the costs that the school incurred would, would did they have to pay for any of these that were not grants? I don't know. We We'd paid for their new ventilation system last year for two hundred thousand dollars. I don't know. I don't know what they incurred this year, but. Do you mean like the um, there's some? The, I know they're doing like the pooled testing, and are there costs related to that? Is that what you're talking about? I'm talking about any costs that they may be incurring that are related to COVID. I think it's probably worthwhile having the you know the superintendent at least look look at it i mean there's an opportunity there you know i would think i mean maybe i'm wrong but well we should ask them for sure yeah. we should ask all departments should be asked if they're having any ongoing COVID expenses i know that we made a lot of purchases that should last a long last time year. in terms of supplies yes, and yeah. cleaning supplies and sanitize the you know hand sanitizers and masks. I know we really stocked up on that. Am I correct, Bob? I have over 12,000 masks. 
different varieties out back. Yeah, so yeah. so some of that stuff we should have and covered the, and with the, the other. And the school had also stocked. And yeah, the school well. is very well stocked. Well, but we should. possible way by the 28th that all the departments can yeah. submit. Yeah, absolutely. What they're. Mm -hmm. And then we can prioritize from there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just. Mm -hmm. Can, you mean any ideas they have as long as it's in it's within the scope to, of this? Right. Within the scope of that <laughs> outline. That's an excellent idea. That's yeah. going to be the best way to figure out yeah. how to use it. Do we know if the schools got a separate COVID type grant like they did last year? Didn't they get 50 or 60? Near the 000? end of the year, they had um, acquired a grant. I, I, I mean, I, I don't disagree with Daryl. I'm just saying that, yeah. you know, we, we might not be privy yeah. to what other, you know, another, like this, for what's coming from school. American Rescue Plan into schools. I'm sorry, Phil. I didn't. I did. Schools. Yeah, I, so that's just something I'm sure that Superintendent Wood would be able to brief us on yeah. all of that. Mm -hmm. So he should definitely be present at the meeting. It'd be nice to have a list of everything and then you can prioritize and then you can determine uh, or the board can determine which projects we should actually yeah, And Ed had suggested pursue. that. <coughs> I, I'm Excuse sure this will be a process. This isn't going to be decided <coughs> on September 28th I, by any means. There's going to have to be some, some ongoing discussions and then prioritizing. So how long do we have to spend it? Um, you know that I, when I met with the accountant the other day, <coughs> I intended Excuse to me. ask her and I didn't didn't ask her. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't on my list. <coughs> Four, year plan. Four year. Okay. Yeah. Is it we really can we can get it done sure? long before that. I'm oh, sure. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. okay. The only reason I'm saying that is because a lot of communities, <clears throat> you know, they they receive a, a large amount. So if they're going right. to put something out to bid, it's going to be a process. Oh right? yeah. So, especially water and sewer mm -hmm. project. So you I may even need to design yeah. things. I mean, yeah. you don't so, know. Yeah. Right. Okay. I have the entire yeah. act here, but um, right. it doesn't reference a date. <laughs> okay. So. Well, again, I we're, we're Lori, looking at a starting yeah. process, a starting point yeah. on the 28th. And, um, but, you know, Daryl's right. We should get information yeah. from, you know, the school about the, any COVID-related expenses, yeah. but from all departments, if, if Bob was going to have anything extra or anyone here at the town hall. And, and the other um, thought was, and, and I have had some individual conversations um, about um, tracking and filing the reports that are required. It's, it's time consuming. Um, I can only imagine it's, yeah, it, it's involved. Um, and you know, so we were thinking that maybe, um, outsourcing or have the accountant do that work. Um, but I understand that, um, Sharon had a conversation with the fire chief too, and the fire chief you know, as emergency management director is is interested or willing to do that as well. And I don't mean to put you on the spot, Bob. Um, but accounting um, is, the accountant is doing that for other communities as well. Okay. So it's certainly not a problem. Um, I mean, it's, it's you're going to get 900,000. It's not, it makes sense to spend a few dollars to have somebody help track it on, unless we can do it in-house <clears> because... You want to make sure it's tracked right. You want to mm -hmm. make sure it's reported right. You got all the guidelines and the federal uh, guidelines that have mm -hmm. to be followed. There's, there's. I think it's a lot of work, but I, you know, it's just, I, I don't want to dump too much work on. Well, and that was, house. yeah, my concern was, you know, will, yeah. will the chief have time for that? Right. Well, um, and I also think very much like how we set up the when the initial. Um, you know, COVID money started coming, right. CARES Act started coming in. Mm -hmm. We had that initial point of, you know, everything went through one account yeah. so that we didn't end up with a big mess. So yeah. we need to, that should be part of the discussion on the 20th. Yeah, I was going to say we can iron How to well. handle it mm -hmm. should be part of it. Efficiently, most efficient. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Daryl, did you have anything else about <clears throat> this? Excuse me. No, that sounds, sounds really good. I look forward to hearing what all the other departments come up with, and we'll, we'll see you guys on the 28th. Yes, indeed. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks, Daryl. Okay, so topic five is the certification of a single voting precinct. We did this. We need to do this. Yeah, we, we need to do this again. 
Yeah, I apologize. Um, I had gotten an email regarding this telling me that the select board was going to have to take a vote to be a single precinct. So I was trying to be efficient and hop right on it and had you guys vote and we looked up what happened 10 years ago. and. Then I got another email going, oh, and by the way, their vote is supposed to say, <laughs> which was more than. So what, it's just correcting we, what we already it's did. It's just correcting what you already did. You were also supposed to be approving the plan that they submitted. Most places will have a plan that has, yeah, that has several precincts in it. Mm -hmm. and, just one. and then the, then the board approves where the precinct lines are this precinct line hasn't changed since 1845 right <laughs> something to be said for consistency yeah. <laughs> i mean it's it's completely appropriate to just have one right. precinct and, and have you're it. also approving they sent me a data block survey data block uh, information sheet which is the culmination of all the census work that was done for 2020. This is this chart with the blue? Correct, Okay. Yes. And so that shows you, breaks it down by ethnic groups, breaks it down, and all those, pre, all those block <laughs> numbers are associated with another map that I worked with two years ago in the beginning of the 2020 census. Um, trying to identify how many people are in those certain blocks. Well, not only do they take my information, but then they also do their own census work that people fill out their census form and the door-to-door -door because I had to sign affidavits and anybody that worked on this had to sign affidavits that none of the information that was received was to be shared with anybody. It was just my office and whoever worked on it and the Census Bureau. Mm. Because their whole thing is to find every possible person and count every possible person. Well, even in Hatfield, there are people that I don't even know are living here because they don't register to vote, they are squirreled away somewhere, and I don't have any information on them, but they go beyond and try to find these people. And so you're- You just have a name and an address. Right. And that's it. Yeah. And they're, so they're approving this. You're approving that, but that's what they've come up with. So, okay. you know, and, and it's pretty consistent. The, the population on here is 3,352. Uh, the population in Hatfield changes every day, so people come people go but that's what they're coming up with which is pretty consistent with you know mm -hmm. what what we've had we're only one precinct and what else are you oh and the legal description well i looked and looked and looked couldn't find a legal description of the town of hatfield except the one where we were incorporated and then we sold some property conveyed some property to williamsburg so they sent me what they used 10 years ago so you're approving that as well which again, they couldn't find anything either because they're taking it from Wikipedia. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So we're just kind of redoing what we did and expanding it a little to, you know, accept the plan, the block data report, the legal description supplied by the Secretary of State's office, and the local election districts review commission. And you, I, you know, it's kind of interesting. It's short. I'm gonna. Can I read? I'm gonna read this description. Yes, sure. It says Hatfield is located on the west bank of the Connecticut River at the mouth of the Mill River, 25 miles north of Springfield and about 100 miles west of Boston. It is bordered to the west by Horse Mountain, a New England granite glacial remnant, to the north by the town of Waitley, and to the south by a bend in the Connecticut River and Northampton, Massachusetts. Um, according to the United Census Bureau, the town has a total of 16.8 square miles, of which 16.0 square miles of its land and 0. Point, 0. 0.8 square miles of it is water. That's pretty, that's and interesting. The, the second page is actually the original description from when they were, when we were incorporated mm -hmm. and um, the granted the incorporation and it tells, but those boundaries have been lessened because 
some Williamsburg, land was Williamsburg, and, yeah. some land, well, first some land, apparently Waitley was yep, part Waitley. of it originally, mm -hmm. and then Williamsburg conveyance, but everything's been pretty much the same mm -hmm. since then. Okay. So we can just take this simple, make this motion and take this vote. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm, I, I suppose you might as well rescind the last vote, maybe. Okay. I move that the town of Hatfield remain a single precinct town and that we accept the plan, block data report, and legal description supplied by the Secretary of State's Office, Local Election Districts Review Commission. Second. A motion made and second. All those in fa any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll we make a motion to rescind the vote of the Board of Selectmen in August for the one, pre one precinct. And I'll second that. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks for all the input, Lydia. Yeah. You're welcome. So a lot of work to do. Yep. That that's that paperwork. similar. <coughs> to, should say we were doing this two years ago. What a project. And then this one is the one having to do with the plan. Nothing's easy. That was easy. It was, wasn't they call it work? For you. Uh, right, there you go. I like that. Okay, so Lydia, is that once we're signed, you're good? I think I'm good. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So our next agenda item <clears throat> is a one-day special alcoholic permit for the Food Bank of Western Massachusetts. I'm assuming you're Cheyenne. Yes. Thanks for waiting patiently no through problem. all those fascinating agenda <laughs> items. Um, <laughs> yep. And um, so Cheyenne, um, it looks like you're having an event to as a fundraiser for the this food bank. The, this is the 11th annual Will Bike for Food right. event. Yeah. Right. Okay. And that's on September 26th. It's a daytime event. Yes, it um, begins at 7, seven. in the after party where we would have uh, beer, cider, and wine that's donated from 2 to 5. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't start at 7 a.m. <laughs> well, the liquor the, license. The miles <laughs> like this, yeah, they're not starting. <laughs> okay. It's not that kind of bike. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, this is a really great event yes. to, to um, you know, raise funds for a really great organization. So, um, yeah, we're excited to be live again. Mm -hmm. Get some folks in person. So yeah, and this is we've done this before. I don't have any questions. It looks like everything's in order here. So did you have any questions? Oops, sorry, that's my phone. <laughs> I don't. No. So I will. I will make a motion to approve the one-day special alcoholic permit to the food bank of Western Massachusetts for the event on September 26th. I'll second that. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? No, good luck. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good luck. Thanks for doing what you do. Thanks for doing it here in Hatfield. <laughs> Thanks, Shane. Take care. Okay, DPW report. Phil, join us up at the mic. So the first item was DPW Union. Uh, I'm really a little lost as to what this is about. So th <laughs> that is, I'll just, again, okay. that, that is there um, as a result of the um, prior negotiations with the union. And of course, we know that the superintendents have dissolved. Right. right. Superintendents has, yes, has and dissolved. As, and as far as we know, negotiations are not being held until the other issue is resolved. Correct. Correct. So, is, so, so, so what's before us right now is really just to approve. Um, so there the, are. So yeah, the, the two percent cola that all employees were were um, given by the select board and the finance committee approved by the town. Approved by the town at yeah. town meeting. Put into the budgets. Um, the 2% COLA that was added to the highway department 
was put there as a placeholder pending negotiations. Um, so now um, with unit, I'm not sure if they were unit B or unit A, B, that's what I, okay, the uh, superintendents um, are no longer, they're not negotiating a contract. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we, we made good and um, implemented the 2% COLA. Yes, we for, were treating for the, them as non-union employees. Correct, 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 yes. And, and I would also add that this is a, a bulk vote that the select board usually takes uh, after town meeting to approve the employees who are receiving, setting the pay, setting the pay rate, and we mm -hmm. hadn't right. done that for these two employees. Is, Correct. Is what this is all boiling it, it, down right. to. Right, normally Correct. it would have been part, well, actually they've been part of the union for some time, and that's yes. always been voted separate from Co the other Correct. employees list. And just, you know, conversations with the treasurer's office, the treasurer's office cannot implement or change pay rates without authorization. Yeah, yeah, I, so it's just a kind of clean it up type Correct. thing. Yep. Yeah, right. that's fine. So that was just, yeah, and again, union negotiations sort of, yeah, mis misleading, but just to update. So is this, do we need a vote, a positive vote, uh, or is this an uh, update, or what? For the new pay this? rates, yeah, just signing, actually, the, I guess you did forms here, I see, Phil, yeah. for, for those. So it's just allowing the two employees to receive the 2%. Oh, well, that's not filled in. I Town employee I, I increase that everybody else has gotten I other the than. The office will be satisfied if that form is signed. Okay. I uh, have the form here. Yeah, but I don't see, I just see the name on them. But that's it. Yeah. Just the name. Doesn't have the pay rate. Oh, but you're attached. Oh, I see. It's in a different place. But you're attaching the memo anyway. Mm -hmm. All set. Yeah. Can I just backtrack? Karen. I, I just good. pulled out the signature file because I knew these would be in there. Where do I do I sign at the bottom here for the liquor license, where it says approved or denied? Yes. And then what to do is just uh, yeah received write out the, the denied. Okay, and just say approved. And, yeah. And sign on that line. Yes. Please. Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt there so we just need we need to take do we take a vote on these or they were they would be a, they would have been included in that mass vote yeah. I mean, because but it's after the fact so if you want to take a vote i mean i would take a vote. make a motion to approve the two percent salary increase as presented second a motion made in second any further discussion no all those in favor aye, aye. aye. I think we can probably move on to the discussion of the water and sewer rates okay. while we no, get our paperwork So Marlene done. was kind enough to reach out to Dave Prickett and company about the water and sewer rates uh, as his recommendation is in front of you that was discussed with the master plan, uh, you know, for the 5%. So I guess. Oh, sorry. Do you have this still? I don't have a copy. Don't have that's it. Okay. Here, you can take this copy if you'd like. Uh, so when we met with, when Dave Prickett presented to the, the town, to the select board of the town back in, I think it was February, right? February, January, Fe January. January. It was in January yes. earlier yep. this year. Um, he um, had, had recommended a 5% increase for water, 25% for sewer. And then we, we needed to make sure that we're covering our operational costs, which water and sewer were running into deficits. Um, so they did an analysis. The report you know, determined that um, we're, we're not covering our expenditures, which we knew. We, yeah, we <laughs> knew. Um, and then looking at, at our revenues, and then also, you know, it's, it's important to be able to for the town to qualify for, for grants. And if you're not able to cover your operational uh, expenses, um, 
it would sort of put us in a position where we wouldn't qualify. Um, it would be very difficult to. And as I recall, last year we started taking the steps we needed to take to incrementally get them. to that. Right. The board voted. Mm -hmm. We had a public hearing. Um, the board voted to increase the rates as recommended mm -hmm. in the report. And there was also a, a recommendation to continue to increase the rates in FY22 and 23. You know, we haven't revisited that, you know, in a while. And so in order to do that, you know, I wanted to make sure that we, we had started discussions. I, I believe that in that discussion with the um, engineering firm, Dave Prickett, um, the, the, what, what came forward was exactly what we're doing. Like the last, the, the last increase was sort of the bigger one. And then, and then future ones right. like now right. would be not that, you know, everything adds up, but it, it's not as big, of course, as the previous one. Correct. And to your point, Marlene, and to, to the engineering's point, was Hatfield has always been under funding um, for, the, yeah. for water and sewer. For some um, time, yeah. For years. For the operation mm -hmm. of, for, for the of those departments. Of it. And yep. so we're, we're trying to do, we're trying to accomplish two things. We're trying to have those become s somewhat self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also, and very important, is we need to meet certain guidelines in order to qualify for uh, grants that we mm -hmm. that might be available. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Because the USDA, I believe, is who they usually use. Is, yes. Did I say that right? right. Mm -hmm. um, for their grant proposals, uh, wants to make sure that the communities are doing their best, you know, already in order to then uh, qualify for a grant. So that's part of what all of this comes together. Yeah, that conversation was a while ago, but that, that's what this is about. So as you remember during that conversation, if the rates weren't raised to what they were when you raised them to 25 and 5, you wouldn't even have qualified for the Correct. USDA. Right. right, right. Right, we wouldn't qualify. And it's one of these things where you're damned if you do and you're <laughs> damned if you don't. Because yeah. if you don't jack up a little bit each time to cover your cost, then... In a couple of years, you got to do a big increase, mm -hmm. and that's what happened mm -hmm. with exactly us on the happened. last time. You had to do a right. big increase because we never covered the cost, and it was never you pumped know, up slowly. So Dave Prickett's group did analyze, you know, going forward mm -hmm. what it should be, you know, and you know that's probably right there in the middle somewhere with the five percent that he feels is com to be comfortable with, to, you know, keep the qualification with the USDA grant as well as keeping the operating budget sufficient under what the fee right. rate rates are. You'd really be shooting yourself in the right. foot if you didn't keep pace so that you were able to qualify for those right. grants. I mean, exactly. When I started yeah. here, there was no increase in water and sore for five years. So that now you're playing mm -hmm. catch up. Right. Because right. exactly increased what's happening them, and that's exactly yeah. right. what happened. Yeah. So this is just for discussion purposes. We'll need to set a hearing, a public hearing. Um, so I just wanted to say that, you know, on the water, so if there was a 5% increase on water, that would be an additional 49 cents per 100 cubic feet. Um, and then on the sewer, uh, we'd be looking at uh, an increase of 93 cents. And for the average user, uh, when I think when we get to the hearing point, but I, we, we'd like it, some information for the average user, so the townspeople sure. can know what we're talking mm -hmm. about, because to most people, that rate per cubic foot be really means nothing the bottom, to them. They right. want to hear what the bottom line, how much your bills are. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Roughly mm -hmm. what you can expect yeah. on mm -hmm. average usage. Right. Yeah. And percentages oftentimes sound high. They certainly did last time, mm -hmm. but, but when you broke it down, right. I, I, you know, it, it right. wasn't horrible, but it was more expensive than we were used to. Yeah. So. So I think the bottom line, Phil and I talked about this, Marlene and I did as well. It's ultimately all of us, right, um, as rate payers, want to know what's it going to cost me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Regard, you can call whatever percentage you want. You can call whatever cubic feet you want. I just want to know <laughs> ultimately, approximately, how much is my bill going up? Right. I, I think to Diana's point, that's what we'll need to be able to, uh, at a public hearing, be able to have that mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah, that's... Townspeople should have that information yeah. sure. as best we can. I mean, it's yeah. all right. It's a price of doing business, you know. I mean, what yeah. can you do? You know, I mean, cost. And, and and the and the cost of having nice perks like 
town water and town sewer. And yeah, absolutely. You know, and maybe, you know, maybe there's areas you look at there in the, for the rescue plan to put in a sewer somewhere that mm -hmm. is affordable, you know, who knows? That would be great to yeah. expand the system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so are there areas in town that do not have town water? Very few. Very few. Yeah. I think there's 13 and, uh, 1,380 households that have water, but the sewer only has 700 and change, mm. so, you know. Right. But, you know, it's the cost. You know, mm. it's the cost. I mean, we have the capacity at the plant. It's just the cost of putting the pipes in the ground and then hoping everybody hooks up. Right. <laughs> That's the other thing. Mm. You know, people right. with it, you know, I mean, we did the straights road and no one's hooked up because people's septics haven't failed. Well, you not you didn't do all of straights road. I'm you did sorry, a little yes, part of it. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> sorry, feeling a little left out there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, yeah, because there's nothing that mandates you to hook up. Yeah, that's surprising. Boy, I would hook up if I had the chance. But. You know, in my past employment, if the sewer line went by your house, you paid a $5,000 charge whether you hooked up or not just because wow. it went by the house. Wow. wow. Well, they tried to recoup some money and, you right. know, it up the value of your home. True. So. That's true. It does. Whether you're hooked up or mm -hmm. not, yeah. the fact that it's there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, well, you know, all for, for um, you know, public hearing discussion. So how soon would we want to be doing that? Like the next meeting or in the first September 28th? That's ample time. Is that enough time to get notices out? Mm -hmm. So just a couple updates while I'm here. Uh, you know, West Street's going well. Uh, we did the final connection into the water by the bridge there. So... You know, it was new hooking into old, so of course there's problems, but, you know, it's all done now, it's paved. I know we had some complaints, you know, from people that the road's bumpy, the road's going to be milled and shimmed. They're trying to do a piece of the sewer, and if they can do that and then hold the road for 30 days from the time that the last pipe goes in, they can mill it and final pave that portion. So I think that's what he's looking to do. It depends on how the sewer goes, but all the... Most of the water, I think there's only maybe one more connection that has to be done. When they ended by USA Waste and the rest is at is 12 inch main from there to Chestnut Street. But they're not going to do that because it's going to be in the way of the sewer. So they're going to wait and just do that piece last with the water. But the rest of the water that we put the 8 inch main in is done. And this, this, all the services are done. The services are done, but the sewer line is now we're going to start the start sewer the sewer line, line. Yep. Yep. and it, they're thinking this will be done this season no, no. They, we just filed well, we filed a while ago for an extension through mass dot for on uh, to august 2022 so they accepted the, the you know the extension so hopefully so will it basically sit like it is now until no, spring? They're gonna, no, they're gonna, they're gonna, they have to shim the road smooth. Okay. I mean, that's one of the... It is bumpy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, all the cross stitches from the, you know, from the uh, water services. But, you know, DOT is going to mandate that they do something. So it mm -hmm. won't be like that for the winter that I can see. Okay. And the other thing is that I, you, my update, I hope you didn't fall off the chair with the price of salt this year. You know, yeah. went up, mm -hmm. it went from $49 to $71, so wow. a 45% increase, increase, which is unheard of. It is what it is. So, Phil, I just have a question. Are we going to need to make a second request to the state to amend our contract to for that? I'm going to have to talk to CEI about that. Uh, yeah. You know, about that extension, because I know that, you know, with Gail her with the contractor, you know, he, we, we put it in probably a good six weeks, eight weeks ago for to get the extension because he was a little worried okay. that he's not going to, you know, he's not going to finish because mm -hmm. we added the water to that. So, yeah. But, so earlier this year, we, yeah. we filed an amendment. I had to have a, a meeting. It was held remotely with, with the Mass Works office. Right. So we will be you touching on base well. with Scott yeah. Simpson and Michael about it. Okay. And matter of fact, I have a report due to MassWorks the end of this month. Okay. Um, so it would be good to 
yeah. communicate yeah. that to I'll them. Scott, you know, I'll talk to I've been talking to Scott on a weekly basis, so I'll talk to him. Okay. Anything else? No. Sounds good. No, lo lots of stuff going on. <laughs> Are you? Thanks, I'm Bill. assuming you're getting ready for winter and no. thinking about Ooh. that. <laughs> do that it's not even fall yes yes we are oh. well like i said i mean last year's bid was 49 dollars, so it's up october 14th or something the bid is up so we ordered 200 ton of salt to fill the shed under the 49 dollars I mean, yeah you know we move some stuff around so we can jam it in there and you know because next year you're going to be paying 71 so so you bought how many? How many? Two hundred ton. And how many do you typically use in a winter? Uh, over a thousand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. But, you know, but that's the room. I mean, we had some from last year left over in there. We figured we could jam the two hundred in there, and we did. So it hasn't come yet, but it's ordered. So we're yep. going to get the forty-nine dollar price. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Phil. Yeah. Good job. Marlene. Um, yeah, I had just, um, you know, wanted to mention the firefighters assistant grant that Senator Warren's office had, had called the office to let the town know that, um, the fire department's application had been approved. Um, and so, you know, we were, we were just very excited to get this news last week and I, I can't be, I'm so proud of the fire department, but anyway, yeah. I'll move on here. Um, it's a nice win. It is. It it's a lot of money. It's yeah. a lot of money. It, it is. Yeah. And, and I know he put a lot of work into that application. Yeah. So. I forget. It was something like 80 a lot of time. something pages or something. Yeah. You know, he was telling me back when he was preparing it. Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot. Okay. Uh, a financial update. Um, the treasurer and I met with the accountant last week. Um, Lori Del Leo was on site last Friday. Um, Lori's working with, with the assessor's office. The Community Preservation CP1 will be filed tomorrow with the Department of Revenue. And um, the accountant is reconciling FY21. She uh, expects to have her submission balance sheet and um, schedule of indebtedness all those, those reports that are required mm -hmm. to close out FY21. She's looking at the end of September, early October. Um, I reached out to the auditor and were asking if he might be able to pencil Hatfield in for an audit at the end of October, early November. Wow. So, but Lori had said that she may be able to give us an estimate, free cash estimate, you know. Of the correct October. year, of the current even. Year, yeah. yeah. I, I know. <laughs> wow, I know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, Ed, you cracked me up. So but the, it's the true. <laughs> treasurer's office is is completely reconciled to awesome. her books, and yep. now Lori is is reconciling to the treasurer's as it should be. Good job. Well, that's great. It's that's great. So kudos kudos to the treasurer's office and and Treasurer, obviously the accountant yeah, and Melanie and Heath have been really great. Yep. Is in touch communicating with the school and and reconciling. Yep. Mm -hmm. So everything is is working very well the way it should great. be. Nice. Okay. Um, also for the board's consideration, um, the board has, we've had previous discussions regarding vehicle use of the DOR's commuting rule. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I'm asking the board to consider accepting this proposed um, policy regarding vehicle use and I understand speaking with the accountant that it it should be you know the effective date that we have here. It, it, I I I don't know that for me anyway. I don't know that it makes a big difference, but um, the accountant, the accountant feels one. that it is important. Yeah, you, um, you know the the important thing. So <laughs> we've had meetings about this, and I'm I'm sure people at home. Are, 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 recall some of those certainly the board memorable does memorable ones yes uh, memorable ones uh, but the the town has never had an official vehicle use policy it, it's sort of been left up to interpretation let's say so so this this puts that yeah. 
if, if this gets accepted, this puts a policy into yeah. place so that there's no questions going forward as to what IRS right. um, valuation rule or you know right. um, should be used. So yeah. so that's what that's what this yeah. is doing. So, it's finally right. A, the a, purpose is to determine a valuation of the vehicle that is used correct. by the employee. Right. Um, Which employees pay do pay. Um, Taxation, you know, are, are tax on, on using right. a town vehicle, just That's so right. people understand that. So. That's right. So you're looking for a vote? So I'm looking for this? the board to vote to um, approve the policy. And if you're comfortable, at the bottom of that draft, um, it references example evaluation calculation. So the board could change the days per year if you want to. But we took, you know, talking with the accountant, we use 261 work days per year, less two weeks paid time off. Um, so the total commuting days would be 251. So that would be based on a person that works full time. We do have employees that work part time um, that, that use a town vehicle mm -hmm. at the school. Um, initially, I was thinking that we would amend our HR policies and, and add this. The, H, the town's HR policies um, does not include, it excludes the school. Um, so gotcha. I just wanted to make uh, sure the board understood that. So I, I changed how I had initially um, proposed this. And, and so it would not be included. It would not, the language would not be added to the HR policy. It would be gotcha. a standalone, a standalone policy. policy. So, may, so may I ask a question? So, on the bottom, you just you have an example of the valuation, like, and you just went over it, two sixty one. So, ultimately, we just have the employee though say, "I really work two hundred and forty days, or I work." Yeah, you know, a part-time employee works. A, I mean, this 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 is an example, an not example. It, so. We, but Correct. we go with what the real right. number of days worked yeah. is. That's so, reported. The that, days yeah, commuted yeah. is reported. Right, and I, I believe I added in here. Um, yes, I did. Work days shall be determined based on employment status and a monthly log submitted. Yeah. So the employee would have to document the yeah. days that they commuted, sure. and therefore. You use those number okay. days. Okay. I just want to thank you for clarifying. I just yeah. I assume that's what it was because it says example. I just wanted to make sure it is an example. Okay, yeah. because it could be more or less. Right. If it's yeah. someone who ends up getting called in on a weekend or whatever. Right. Okay. Okay. But just so the and this is also helpful for the employee to understand mm -hmm. how yes. the calculation works. Okay. Okay. I don't have an issue with it. So I so you want you need a motion to accept uh, please, the policy or a motion to it. accept it. Okay, so I will make a motion to uh, approve the uh, calculation for the valuation of tax purposes using, and I'm using air quotes here, commuting rule, uh, IRS publication 15-B, um, employer's tax guide to fringe benefits. Um, and to have this effective as of January 1st, 2020. I'll second that. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. no. Uh, I yes, would I'm, I'm sorry. Go, no, I can. would just pipe in that I think, you know, we obviously need to respect the fact that we contractually have yes. these obligations. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would personally never want to enter a new contract with a new employee that gives this benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just want to go on record as saying that. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. I, I just wanted to um, take a moment to, uh, getting back to my earlier comments, there's um, a lot of discussion over the last few months. And I, ultimately, I want to thank the treasurer's office, the accountant's office, the auditor's office, Marlene. Uh, in particular for coordinating a lot of this because we, we just everybody just needed to have a conversation and, mm. and get on the same page whatever that page was we just needed to come together and have the conversation and that ultimately happened and here we are finally with a way yeah. forward and a, finally a policy mm. for the town of Hatfield yeah so, so it just it kind of so thank you everybody it, it, yeah, thank you yeah. Everybody. yeah. It was. Yeah. everybody we got there we got there as, mm -hmm. as we usually do right so all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, next item, hazard mitigation plan update. And as you know, the group, there's a group, town, town employees, <laughs> fire chief, police chief, DPW, myself. We've been uh, working with a consultant at PVPC, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, on updating the town's current hazard mm -hmm. mitigation plan. And um, so we have pretty much finalized that plan. And the next step is to have a second public meeting at a select board meeting. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at, um, I believe, October 18th um, to be our second meeting in October. But that reminds me, I want to have a discussion with the, with the board later about, about the meeting meetings. dates. Yeah. Um, but we can change that if the 18th is not going to work. Uh, but anyway, we will have a second public meeting, and, um, and and really that's just an opportunity for folks to, you know, weigh in and, and <clears throat> provide Excuse comments me. to the town, and um, then we will finalize that uh, plan for the board to vote, and then it will be submitted to to uh, MEMA, and, and then also to, well, MEMA is a state agency, but then it goes to another state agency for final approval well i know this has been a lot of work yes um you know it it is we're going through the existing plan but at least we we weren't creating it you know <coughs> we're not creating the plan some communities are just putting a plan together right um but it's it's certainly a helpful tool and um it's good to have DPW and, and fire involved in these discussions because they contribute to quite a bit of that right. plan. Right. No, it's an, it's important to do, um, but it, it has been a process and you've stayed, you know, on top of I it did. and diligent. I thank you for that. Just like to add for what it's worth previously when the hazard mitigation plan was previous was creating, or maybe that was an update too. Um, it was the emergency management committee. And that was a lengthy process, I think, due to the number of people on the committee. And um, I just felt that, you know, we just need our, our key personnel, the fire chief, emergency management director, DPW director, police, and Board of Health was also um, involved and contributed to these meetings. And they went very smoothly. Right. They lasted about an hour and a half. And I think we've had what, five or six, six meetings. So... It's, a, it's still a lot. So thank you for doing that. You're welcome. Um, hiking trail, Horse Mountain. Um, just want to make sure as the board knows that uh, Denison and Don Morin um, offered some time ago uh, some of their property to make it accessible to the existing trail that you know, open space has been working on uh, up on, on Horse Mountain mm -hmm. and um, just how much the town appreciates um, them making yeah. their property available. This property runs south to north on east side, on the east side of, of Horse Mountain. Mm -hmm. and, and I know Brian has had some communications with members of the open space committee and um, we're still working out a memorandum of agreement um, with the Morins, but uh, the board has board sent them a thank you letter. And, mm -hmm. you know. They did, thank you. And I don't know if the Morins watched the meeting or the open space. Uh, the, the thank you note um, was overdue mm -hmm. to, to be sent, quite honestly. And, and, and there's a myriad of reasons for that. Um, some good, maybe, you know, I, I don't know. Um, it, it wasn't intentional that that's not how this board operates or our town administrator. I, I think, as Marlene just alluded to, we're, we're still waiting for some legal type things in the background. And I yeah. think um, part of our feeling at, at one point was, Mil, let's see how that plays out if everyone's on board with it. But right. so anyhow, I, even though it's overdue, it certainly should not diminish the fact of how kind and uh, generous the Warrens have been. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I would just like to, hopefully they're watching, I'd like to thank them and, and apologizing for the delay and that thank you note getting out. Um, but we, as the board and, and of course the townspeople who benefit from it, appreciate everything you've done. So I just wanted to mm -hmm. go on record stating that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we thank them very much. 
Okay. Is that all you had, or did you want to speak to this road race? Um, well, actually, I had was going to. I had thought that I would um, hear from the the police chief prior to finalizing the meeting agenda, and the uh, not the fire chief, the police chief, and he popped into my office uh, yesterday, and I I was aware that the gentleman that's organizing this race next year, and I think it's for April, right? Yeah, yep. April of 2022. And um, he, they were having a telephone conference with the, he was having a telephone conference with the fire chief and police chief last week, and they worked out the details. Um, police chief stopped in my office yesterday morning and said he doesn't have any concerns and very to little no um, details will be used, maybe one or two officers, mm -hmm. you know, for, uh, for detail of work, but um, he doesn't have any concerns and... Um, so this is a cycling race that'll be taking place in Hatfield. Does it doesn't say where, but it's not until April of 2022, right? And they were just looking for approval from from the town to hold this race. Now, was this the same race we discussed mm -hmm. at a prior meeting that the, went through Waitley? And the question was, were they? It would did be they going talk through to Waitley. Waitley. I mean, I thought this race went. Through from Hatfield through Waitley and back to Hatfield. I believe it does go through some I don't some see the route towns. on here. It doesn't. I, I doesn't do believe the it's route. the same one, though, Ed, because mm -hmm. that's I the same question is we, right. you had when we had right. last time. Right. But at we that time, the, about, you know, how that would work. I mean, at that time, Chief Dekoshak, I don't think, was aware of this well, or hadn't been contacted. He yet, hadn't or, been contacted. I had been told that he had been, that he had already talked to right. this gentleman was I was talking we to, were, had talked right. to the police chief, but he had not talked to the police chief. Right. Um, Wouldn't it be appropriate for the organizer of this race to come to a meeting to talk about the and i'm sure he'd be and, glad to. okay and the, sure to talk about to. the the route because it'd be nice for townspeople to know that yes. you know mm -hmm. um it bothers me that they already set up a race and they haven't had our, our approvals you know what i'm saying uh well and this is is, this is I mean, just in a, a way they're proposal. Already yeah, I don't think registrations yeah. are already accepting registrations. I don't know if they are. I think this is just a draft. I, I believe it is a draft. Yeah, this gentleman is just trying to coordinate the yeah. The whole I mean, race I guess well in advance right. of the event. I would like to have yeah. the the organizer in. He knows. He is aware. The gentleman I've been communicating with is aware that the board has not approved this yet. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to hear about it. I think. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to, to have it come through Hatfield, but residents should certainly, you know, we should have an opportunity to make sure residents know for, from a safety standpoint for the cyclists, mm -hmm. um, you know, as well yeah, as just people me. knowing when it's yeah. going to happen, exactly where it's going to go. And Will it be that. marked out? And, right. Okay, so the, are you all set, Marlene? I am. And the last... Um, is just under continued old business, and it's the discussion of town hall use. Mm -hmm. um, I sort of, I sort of asked for this. <laughs> I know. Here uh, we are not, again, Amy. It's, this wasn't about the museum. Mm -hmm. What I had requested was right. we should have a discussion before we discuss the museum mm -hmm. about what the town's needs are, and I have like four categories of things, such, such as. Whichever use is used on the second floor, uh, the building inspector said it would have to have a handicapped uh, bathroom, mm -hmm. no matter what we used it for. And number two, I think a discussion has to be done about the TV studio. He's operating, John's operating in a closet, and he can't operate at the school. So I think the discussion is where do we put John and what what's the most best place. Mm -hmm. The third discussion, there's all these files that are downstairs and upstairs, and we worry about the 100-year flood. If the flood comes in, those files are all being ruined. So what do we do with that? And the fourth thing on the, be on the building is meeting space. I mean, if, if we're looking at more meetings being broadcast on TV right now, this is the only place that it can happen unless we determine that we set up remote sites and but we would have to have a discussion with John and what the equipment needs would be and if that's even possible or whether if it's upstairs or whatever I mean things like that so I mean because right now our last meeting in here we had like 10 people and the place was packed 
<laughs> right. So, and then right now, if we're meeting here, the school committee can't, <clears throat> the planning board can't. They, they have to meet elsewhere. And then if they meet elsewhere, they're not broadcast. So, I mean, I think it's important to, before we even get to the museum, to discuss what direction do we want to go in and what can the town afford or what do we want to put on the agenda to bring up because right now as far as this building coa is is wonderful it's great down there we this building's finally handicap accessible so the last unknown is the third floor if it becomes a museum what would be the cost and and how the town and then if, if that becomes a museum how do we deal with all these other issues so that's what this agenda was supposed to be. It wasn't really about the museum. It was right. about discussing the building needs and then also meeting with the museum folks to discuss which direction is the best direction to go in. So. And I appreciate hearing and knowing what other uses. To me, that's, that's useful to me, yeah. as knowing what, what else you're thinking about. So I had a, an idea that I had talked to Marlene about that might help with some of these things. So we have Phil's office is empty. You're going to move over there, mm -hmm. which so Marlene's office would now be big enough to have meetings in, not necessarily when you weren't there, but um, you know, like our executive sessions could be comfortably held in there and, and that sort of thing. So now you have my thought was if your office is empty, I sort of feel like Karen and Gerard are expected to work in this little tiny space. I wouldn't particularly like that. I think it would be disruptive and, you know, that sort of thing. So my thought was, what if each of them gets an office, but it's also got a secondary purpose? And I thought, if, if John, if, because your office is quite large, Right, my current office. Your current office is yeah, large enough that maybe with a, a temporary divider. I'm not suggesting permanent walls or anything like that, but the, you know, a, a divider. Mm. So John's, would that work? No. Why? Oh. I want to move the broadcast equipment from the school over here, and then there will be a connection, and there will be computers running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year long. But why? So why couldn't that happen? Well, I'll be like the server mode. Okay. So that couldn't be in like half of like it's Marlene's not office. Quiet place for somebody to work. Oh, you know, it's not quiet. Yeah. Oh. It's got to have environmental controls. Okay. Not necessarily fans. that. But it's well, got, but it's got uh, a can over, right. It's got the fans. It's got yes. a rack equipment with three different things, all the fans going on at the yeah. same time. Okay. So, so, I mean, when I was on the select board before, our meetings were at the school. That's right, but the school was connected to the studio in the back. The it's school. not anymore. Yeah, okay. The library is not going to be the meetings anymore. So right, I know. Stuff. Okay. Okay. So yeah, he has got moved out. The front, that connection was broken. Oh. Hmm. I didn't realize that. <laughs> well, I still think there's some merits to having them each have their own space. And you're talking about the files that need to be brought up. So mm -hmm. files could be brought up. Those office spaces are large enough that there could be some file space, some storage in there, but also have enough working space for each of them. And then I was thinking one, they could share the space maybe with the, it, there could be dividers, but it could be a, the break room. Although if this is working fine, do people come and eat their lunch here? Uh, we haven't used that table back there because it, Broken. We need to, yeah. It's well, broken. I mean, so we could get a new table. table. But some people do. Once in a while, somebody might come in here and use use. But what the do table people here. generally do for any kind of break space? They just they don't. They don't, don't. have a break room. They don't. Okay. Just yeah. Okay. Just, just, no I don't. Breaks. I don't let anybody <laughs> take a break. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but this space would be available if the if the furniture, if the table wasn't broken. Oh yeah, and people and, could come in here for for a little peace and quiet, or to share lunch with. And honestly, colleagues. the employees would be so grateful if there was a small room just to. You know, sometimes now and then somebody wants to make a personal call or take care of personal business on their break. They can come in here. Just, no, they could. Yeah, although reception, cell phone reception is not the best in here. But right. it would be nice just to. 
And I think it's healthy to step away from your, your mm -hmm. desk, your office space for a little while and just, you know. I guess my point is putting that in with, the, with one of their office spaces isn't really the best idea, but being able to use this, because during the day, this room isn't, right, used often for meetings. No. I mean, there is no. sometimes in the morning or whatever. Yeah. If, not, yeah. If it's used anytime, it's usually mornings. I don't know. That was my thought that that would solve the storage problem for the files. And it would, and I don't know, Karen, how you feel about being in that small space, but I just feel like we mm. have these two spaces. Why would we not? Yeah. It's sort of, they're sort of in a Unless you would want a whole one for what you need to do. Would If you had a whole one, when there's all offices, I would bring all the, the entire control room and all the cameras and everything over here. I would be completely out of the pool. But that, and, but that wouldn't be, if it was in its own office with a door, you don't think that the sound would be disruptive to the offices on either side? That's a thought, too. Would that solve your problems? It would. May I? Of course. So, so I agree with... Um, what Ed had said in the beginning, which is I think we need to kind of get a plan going. Mm -hmm. But I, I think I would suggest that the next steps are to get the employees together mm -hmm. to sit down uh, or somehow uh, ask, what do you need? You know what I mean? I, I mean, l let's get the employees who work here day in and day out, let's get them mm. set up with what we think, including John, by the way, including what we think is best. I, mm. I mean, because if they sit down together, something could come up where it's mm -hmm. like, hey, okay, nobody really needs that room because we're going to do X, Y, Z. Mm. I, I would suggest or recommend that. Um, doesn't mean everyone's going to get what they want, but at least everyone's mm -hmm. going to hear the same thing and sit there and understand one another's needs. Mm -hmm. Once we know what our day-to-day -day employees need, I think that's going to tell us what we have available for space mm. beyond that. Um, that's just my suggestion. I, I think the people who are here day in and day out, that that's probably who we should go to first yeah. to, mm -hmm. to hear I from. I would agree. And, and then take, kind of take it from there. And I, I expect you know? that the priority is um, space for storaging files. Mm -hmm. We just don't have enough space in town hall to store those files. We have, you know, filing cabinets, boxes stored downstairs, mm -hmm. which is not the best place. No. They need no. to be on higher ground. So, and, and, and those are the kinds of things mm -hmm. that are, are going to, to guide us to the future, right? I mean, we've got mm -hmm. to take care of records and, and, and yeah. things that date back hundreds yeah. of years. It came up during and our hazard know. mitigation plan, yeah. so, storing files. So, and, and, so we, and, and I think if you have different people in the same room, even if it's to talk about, let's just say, the records, someone who you wouldn't necessarily, you know, might have some input that you, you just, if they weren't part of that conversation, you'd, you'd never hear from them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, so if everyone's together, maybe there's an idea out there or a thought or what have you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have the room with the copier, right? Small, that, with that, mailboxes in there. And the the mailboxes. Mm -hmm. and the, I mean, I wonder, is that... Would that space be big enough for what John needs? Ooh, no. No. Yeah, okay. Like no, redeserve. You know, maybe we just need, you know, I, I think if we had a schematic, if one exists per floor, <coughs> and kind of saw it and how it is now and how many square feet, I mean, and, and then kind of take it from there to say, well, I, you know, my desk doesn't need to be humongous, or I do need a humongous desk. I mean, I mean whatever it, it may be, mm. yeah, people, and, and that's going to help us fill They may have some good suggestions yeah. about places where there's a lot of, like the assessor's office has a lot of space with just yes. one person in there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then there's other spaces that are smaller that have two people. I mean, Sharon's office is a lot of people in that small Crowded space at times. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't work that well that way that's myself some maybe some people love it but i just you know mm. you're, i think that's a good suggestion ask the well, people it's, who it's are, a starting point and and then that's going to then important. that will lead us mm -hmm. to, to the discussion about the upstairs and meeting space and and you you make a good point about you know we do want to make sure that particularly school committee our meetings and planning board meetings are, are televised but it doesn't seem i mean i i it doesn't seem we've ever had conflicts with those things. In other words, 
jockeying for this space at the same time, have we? That I just haven't been aware of? Or? Um, no. I, I mean, it, it seems to be a little, you know, sort of a, a flow and we manage. And, right. Yeah. Well, I, um, I would agree. I, I, and I, I think that we, we, need, we need the space on this floor for sure to be probably utilized a little more efficiently with whatever that little redesign is. And, and then whatever case needs to be made for whatever for upstairs, there's got to be a case made for it, right? So um, I, I agree with you because I actually had those comments with Marlene, like how, how often is it double booked or is it a problem for people? And you What know. we don't want is large spaces sitting around unused. Correct. Because That's exactly. we think we need two spaces for these larger meetings and then they just don't ever get used. Right. right. That would be so inefficient and counterproductive. So... You know, lots of places. I think this is actually pretty easy to solve. Yeah, stuff. I think it is too. We just need to get the right. Everybody and then we can them. get to the point where maybe we can make that decision that the upstairs should be for. Yep. You know. I, I agree. And, and thing, I think one one thing that's a given for the upstairs is if we're going to use it, no matter what we're using for, it has to be a handicapped bathroom. So I mean, that's that's our that's a you know a given. Well, yeah. So. And so that that does not exist on the capital plan right. currently. And it should be. No. It should be. Because yeah. I think that's yeah. like 50 grand right oh, there. Really that's what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, it was close to 50. Yeah. Because Phil went and did some estimating, right? So. 50,000. Mm. 50, For just a mm. handicap accessible bathroom. Bathroom. You have to take the walls out between the kitchen, existing kitchen and the bathroom because there's not enough space for the wheelchair the, to turn. The wheelchair around. to turn, oh. yeah. So. Then you got to pipe it. You've got to bring electricity up. There's and electricity no in the bathroom. Electric up there. There's two plugs. Yeah, yeah. There's we... no HVAC system up there. So I mean, you're I mean, talking. Yeah, the electrical <laughs> is. You have to. If you did that, you might. Regardless well... of ultimately what the use is upstairs, to your point, the but bathroom some, needs to be done. And well, yes, but, you know, there's some things that have to be addressed before. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Right. So we're something. getting there, Amy. Yeah, yeah, no, and I, I agree. I mean, part of this whole discussion with the museum is like, well, you know, it's not happening until, you know, nothing can happen until that's upgraded. And, you know, the commission is certainly looking at other things, I think, as a permanent. Um, um, I think it would be wrong of us if we didn't at least talk about the other stuff. Because it's that's important too, to this building. I mean, it's it's wrong that we don't mention it because if if we do go with the museum up there, we still are going to have to address this other stuff somehow. Yeah, let's get it right the first time. Exactly. Or, or try to get it right. So that's why we need a game plan. Yeah. yeah just look at today. You know, well, that's what I was going to say. Our space need, needs are constantly going to be can't changing. Look at today, because ten years ago when they were going to do the whole town hall renovation with the big project. You know, and everybody put their needs and what they thought they needed. It's not the same today as it was right back there. Right. You know, right. When we went around even to do these renovations, you know, how much square footage you need, what do you need, what do you need. As you can see, it's changed. Plus, right. the building changed. codes change too. So. They do. Yep. Right. Well, that's it. We want to make determinations for the not only now but for the future. To Phil's point, by Amy. Thank you for coming, Thank Amy. You. Yeah, that was very educational. Thank you, Amy. That all. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay, so somebody did join. Is that that L S? That's not Claudia. You. That's oh, not it's, I, Lydia. Lydia. No, Lydia's there's on There's somebody twice. else. Yeah, L S. Oh, yeah. There's an L. Yeah. Somebody that says an L, but it, I'm just double checking that it's not Claudia. Okay, so Could, I was ho ho holding out hope that she would show up at some point, yeah. but. Could you perhaps at your next, um, either the next one or the one after your department head meeting, mm -hmm. maybe just kind of kick this off, like, listen, the board would like us, meaning you guys, to, mm -hmm. to sort of start having some conversations. Oh, I that's mean, just, yeah. I, I, don't know know how, regarding, yeah. I don't know how to kick it off, but I, yeah, I mean. That would I, be I appropriate. Just, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I'm going to, so we have a department head meeting next week, but I, what I was thinking of send out an email in advance of that mm -hmm. so people can come prepared for that yeah, discussion. Both their workspace and, and their storage. In their storage, yeah. Needs. Yeah, and I know yeah. we've been through it before. And, and that ultimately, you know, when we, um, 
when the COA finally got refurbished, it was based off of what um, the, the plans that they brought forward, uh, both Jane and Cookie and, and then Jerry. I mean, it was kind of, we need this. We need a separate office for some private conversation. Yeah. You know, you know we, we need to know what, what people need or what they want. Mm. And we can certainly try to accommodate that. But we need, we need a guide, right? Mm -hmm. we, we need the people that need the space, that use the space. They're, they're the experts on what they need. Mm -hmm. That's who we need to hear from, yeah. and and we I would suggest we'll do our best to accommodate. It. You know, when the COA renovation went forward and they did what they brought forth, you moved two offices out of the basement up here. Yes, mm -hmm. Un under un mean. understood. Right. Mm -hmm. So that added, you know, right. You know, that wasn't in the plan for this. And we have a shared space, so that's what I mean. We we need to see what, you know, let's sit, let's take a step back, sit down, and go through all this. Uh, because we want to utilize our space. Is though, there too, ability right? to, um, and I mean, it's, but maybe a break space or that that space for employees could be downstairs. Is that possible? Somewhere downstairs. I don't know. Just uh, every all, all the space down there is used. Yeah, it well, really looks nice. I will say, I I went to an event. Chief, well, I was gonna say the old fire chief and the old police chief, but aren't they being used for storage? You have all, that, all the stuff for the fire departments down there. As far as the communication, the state communication is still down there. Right. And that makes noise. Yeah, there is no equipment in the. There all day. Yeah. Oh, the, well, we wouldn't expect them to sit in there all day. The police department's yeah. old. Oh, you mean for office spacing? Here, I'm talking. You know, break room. They might be sitting down. <laughs> but the police department's um, old room is used for storage. storage. Right. But you and are. Those correct. rooms are. Fired. Those aren't in good shape. No. No. They're not. Well, now the rec department's going to need room somewhere because we kicked them out of there. All their stuff's yeah. in that storage container, and it's where the two thirds full of rec department stuff that has to go somewhere. Yeah, where the the fire um, <coughs> fire what do I want to call it? The fire um, system, fire alarm system. Can and this can is I, in the back room now, right? Where the yes. used to be storage the for the rec. The yeah, Marlene. Oh, would you consider attending this uh, meeting with the employees? Sure, I'd be our, happy to attend. He's I mean, our town The rec space. committee might be looking at a storage, a, a portable storage building to come in to lock up all their stuff. I'm not sure. It has to go somewhere. Right, yeah. it has to go someplace. All yep. the stuff's got to go somewhere. And regarding a break room, let's get that table fixed or toss it. Yeah, get a I new was, one. And can yeah, we just close just, that? Yeah. Can we just close the divider and make that? Unless there's yeah. a meet, larger well, meeting I mean, happening, just the, to what's make What's the it, problem of being in a room that's well, bigger for a break room? I well, mean, there isn't, except if it just if there's another meeting. I was just having well, a conversation with somebody just, about yeah. whether we might be able to salvage that table, Phil, and and I didn't know if um it was somebody Probably who just, might be it's able. It's the to, legs, right? So it must be some it's a cross good table. braces or something. Yeah, well, it's but a big it's heavy just, duty one. Yeah, it's it's one end of the table. But it would be nice, you know, because we have the refrigerator here, it would be nice to close yeah. that off. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't. Yeah. I mean, I guess that was to help close the Yeah. So that would be great. And I, we'll Ed, I would feel good if Ed went Just to the let meetings me know because what he's. Time and mm -hmm. you're going to meet. And, and actually, you can give the department heads a head up, say, we're looking at yeah. what your needs are. Yeah. So yeah. we would will... hope that the department heads would ask their employees as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we want the we want the employee to to speak. Mm -hmm. yeah, somebody or, or might have a great something. idea about right. something. Right. So. so this would be next Thursday, Ed, at nine thirty in the morning. Is that too early? Well, I need some beauty sleep, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> because his wife his wife tells him he's a beauty. So. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right. Look to the future. All right. Oh Whatever. yeah. Yeah. I mean, within, you know, we're right. We're not going to embark on another big right. That's you know. something too often we do is we're dealing with the present and we're not thinking about the future. Right. right. We need to do that. Yeah. Right. But. Got to think of the future. Yeah. Okay. Well, I. You know, I really. I assume we're done with this discussion. I and so. I. You know, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but it is. It is upsetting to me that we did not have a, an update from our COVID coordinator. Particularly, it, you know, to me, that's a big part of the duties of this position. Mm -hmm. This person was on the agenda. They knew they were on the agenda. I'm not sure what the 
Yeah. You know, maybe something came up. I certainly hope yes. it wasn't an emergency or anything like that. But this is not the first time this has happened. So it's important to me that this person start coming to meetings and reporting to the townspeople as is appropriate under the circumstances. And I just want to. I will follow up with with the coordinator and the Board of Health chair tomorrow. Okay. I, I would suggest that if, if Claudia can't make it for whatever reason that um, the information she has, she's funneling through the Board of Health, so maybe Chairman Osley or, or, Somebody another, can or another member. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, there should be representation. It gets to back it. to, Is, you know, my comments at the last meeting, that if we're going to have you know, we're, we're, we're back to, you know, we do have the mass mandate at the schools and that sort of thing, and that's fine. But if we're going to have those sort of things, it should be also in conjunction with better checking of MAVEN and better reporting to townspeople mm -hmm. so that people are up to date and up to speed on what's happening. And, and that, that should be, we had, b before we had a report every, every week, or excuse me, every meeting when it mm -hmm. was carried. Mm -hmm. I, do, I think that that is a completely appropriate request from this board and on behalf of townspeople that they're getting those reports. And I, I think not showing up at a meeting, unless there was some type of an emergency, and I certainly hope there wasn't, is, is mm -hmm. inexcusable. And, and, and I guess I wouldn't be feeling this frustration if this was the first time it happened, but it's not. We have any other business? Can I make a motion to adjourn? Second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Marlene, thank you. Karen, yep. thank you. Phil, yep. John, Thanks, as always, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.